So let's talk about Book 1, Chapter 7 of Aristotle's Nicomachean Ethics. We're here on page 10 of the CRISP translation, pages 10 through 13. This is about three pages of text, and it's broken up into paragraphs. The first paragraph here begins, Aristotle says, But let us return again to the good we are looking for, to see what it might be, since it appears to vary between different actions and skills. It, the good, is one thing in medicine, another thing in military science, and so on in all other cases. What, then, is the good in each case? Okay, I'll pause in the text there and note Aristotle is bringing us back uh, to the key question of what the good is that's pursued by different sciences, actions, and skills. Remember, we began this uh, work, the Nicomachean Ethics, by observing that every human activity uh, and science aims at some sort of good. So he's reminding us again, what are we talking about? What is it that brings together human activities like medicine and military science and everything else that we do? Well, he gives this in the next sentence. He says, what is the good in each case? Surely it is that for the sake of which other things are done. So in other words, it's the good or the end or the, the destination, the target, if you will, of the activity or the science. Aristotle goes on to say, in medicine it is health, in military science it's victory, in house building it's a house, and in other cases, something else. In every action and rational choice, the end is the good, since it is for the sake of the end that everyone does everything else. I think the way we should think about this is that Aristotle is telling us that the good is going to be this name for the end or the goal of every action and science. So, what is it that governs and directs the activity of medicine that the doctor or the nurse performs? Well, it's the end of maintaining and restoring health. What directs the activity of the general or the soldier? Well, it's victory in war. What directs the activity of the carpenter or the mason in building in house building? Well, it's the finished house. So every action, rational choice, and science leads to some end which is called the good, and that is the thing for which that entire activity takes place. Back to this text in the first paragraph. So if everything that is done has some end, this will be the good among things done. And if there are several ends, these will be the goods. So we've covered again this territory of looking at actions, sciences, and activities, and choices that are directed towards certain ends which are called goods. This is our starting point in chapter 7. Let's move on now to the second paragraph of chapter 7, around line 24 in the middle of page 10 of the crisp Cambridge translation. Aristotle says, our argument then has arrived at the same point by a different route, but we should try to make it still clearer. Since there appear to be several ends, and some of these, such as wealth, flutes, and implements generally, we choose as means to other ends, it is clear that not all ends are complete. Okay, I'm going to stop there and give you some commentary. Uh, since there appear to be several ends, there are several goods and goals that we pursue in our daily lives, and some of these ends, and he gives three examples, wealth, flutes, or musical instruments, and implements or tools generally, so these are ends that we might pursue, but we choose them as means to still further ends. So I choose wealth for the sake of spending it and the things which I can buy with it. I choose the good of a flute. I purchase a flute or I manufacture a flute for the sake of being able to play it well or to give it to somebody who can play it well. So that I, I choose and act toward producing a flute or obtaining a flute, but that flute then is a means to a further good of the music that it produces. And he says tools and implements generally, right? Nobody buys or builds a hammer simply to have a hammer. You want the hammer in order to do something still further with it. And this is what he means, I think, when he says that not all ends or goods are complete in themselves. Some of them are incomplete or instrumental. They point towards still further goods or activities that we do with them. Now back to the text. But the chief good manifestly is something complete. 
Okay. So we have this now new idea here of the chief good, the highest good or end that human beings can have. This manifestly will be something complete. It will not be an instrumental good that I use in order to obtain something else. It won't be a good like wealth. It will be of a different type of good. This is what we're zeroing in on with the idea of happiness. Back to the text. So, if there is only one end that is complete, this will be what we are looking for. And, if there are several of them, then it will be the most complete. So, if I'm looking for the highest human good, I'm going to look for it by looking for the human good that is complete or most complete of all human goods. The one that seems to be fully satisfactory in itself and not directed, like wealth is, towards the achievement of still further goals. Here's the text again. We speak of that which is worth pursuing for its own sake as being more complete than that which is worth pursuing only for the sake of something else. Okay, let me pause there in the middle of the sentence. This seems to be self-evidently true, does it not? Something, is wor something that is worth pursuing for its own sake is more complete, more full and satisfactory as a good than the thing that we pursue only for the sake of something else. If I'm seeking a degree in order to get a job, if the degree is merely a means to the job, then plainly the job is more fully satisfactory to me as an object of desire, as a good that will fulfill me, than is the degree that I use. If I'm going to obtain wealth in order to go on a trip, the trip plainly is the more complete good than the actual cash money that I'm, uh, that I'm working to obtain in order to buy the trip. Back to the sentence here. And that which is never worth choosing for the sake of something else is as more complete than things that are worth choosing both in themselves and for the sake of this end. And so that which is always worth choosing in itself and never for the sake of something else, we call complete without qualification. So the distinction Aristotle is making here is between instrumental goods of the kind I just described, goods like wealth, which I choose for the sake of then later obtaining something else, and then goods that I choose for, the, uh, for themselves only and never for the sake of something else. This turns out to be the kind of thing we're looking for when we're looking for the ultimate human good or the chief good. And Aristotle then applies this to the question of happiness on the at the bottom of the page in the last paragraph. Happiness in particular, he says, is believed to be complete without qualification since we always choose it for itself and never choose it for the sake of anything else. Happiness here means flourishing or being in an excellent state and Aristotle is pointing out that happiness is not an instrumental good. Happiness is a final good. It's a good that we choose only for itself. We don't seek to be happy in order to obtain some further good beyond it. We choose everything else for the sake of trying to become happy, flourishing, and excellent. To the text again. Honor, pleasure, intellect, and every virtue we do indeed choose for themselves, since we could choose each of them even if they had no good effects, but we choose them also for the sake of happiness, on the assumption that through them we shall live a life of happiness, whereas happiness no one chooses for the sake of any of these, nor indeed for the sake of anything else. So let's take a look at this long sentence again. Aristotle says, Honor, pleasure, intellect, and every virtue we do choose for themselves. So I do seek honor, pleasure, and virtue and intellect for the sake of themselves. But they're not this good without this complete good without qualification that he spoke of at the end of the last paragraph, because in addition to choosing them for themselves, I also choose them for the sake of happiness. So when I seek honor, I seek the good of honor and I seek the good of happiness through my pursuit of honor. And the same with the others that he lists. But he says, um, we choose, um, sorry, whereas happiness no one chooses for the sake of any of these. I don't seek to be happy in order to receive honor. I don't seek to be happy in order to have pleasure. I don't seek to be happy in order then to become virtuous. 
the arrow goes the other direction. And this indicates that of all of these goods being named, happiness is the complete and chief good that we're looking for. This is important because it's going to set up happiness as being at the top of this entire pyramid of goods. Then we need to work on coming up with a definition of happiness, and that's coming very shortly. This brings us to the bottom of page 10, about the first third of chapter 7 of book 1 of the Nicomachean Ethics.